Welcome to Holistic Human Performance Podcast. My name is Jenna Bradshaw, where we talk all things holistic health, wellness, spirituality, fitness, meditation, energetics, and so much more to help you become the healthiest version of yourself. Let's dive in. This is not medical advice. This is simply to help you on your journey through health, fitness, and wellness. I hope this helps. You can complement this with anything that you are doing currently in your life. Enjoy. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to announce that the free Unblock and Awaken Masterclass is now available. Listen, I want to help you all be able to create a holistic lifestyle, be healthy, do what you love, and in turn, find your soul's purpose where you can help other people do what you love and make money doing what you love. And I'm going to show you the steps that I break down in this masterclass where we're going over each one in depth and how you can apply this to your life. Literally, you watch it and you can instantly apply this to your life. And don't forget, I have a special gift for you at the end of the masterclass, but it only lasts until September 1st. So get to it and you can find it at www.holistichumanperformance.co forward slash unblock awaken masterclass. See you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Holistic Human Performance Podcast. We have a very special guest with us today. We have Corinne Ryder. She is a functional medicine nutritionist with a passion for transforming lives through the power of food. I mean, who doesn't love food? (laughs) And I'm so excited that, you know, we got to chat on the phone and just like connect and we have so many commonalities and I'm so excited to chat with her about her philosophy and really all about food and nutrition and what we need to know uh, about how to cater to our bodies, cater to ourselves and what's going to be best um, in terms of just like tools and tips that you could take with you. So without further ado, Corinne, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. I'm always yes. humbled that <laughs> someone would want to have me on. <laughs> of course. Yes. We have so many commonalities. So first and foremost, I want to know, how did you even get into having this passion for food? That's a good question. Um, I fell into the world of wellness pretty much at the age of 20, something like that. I actually, um, I got sick with two autoimmune diseases and that kind of shifted my thought process, my career, everything. I, although I studied a first degree in law and okay. finance. Wow. And I worked in totally a Totally different. <laughs> yeah. 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 I on the side was always looking for ways to help myself. So I was, I was very curious. So I was mm. asking, you know, I went to see all kinds of holistic, you know, therapy people and I was doing all kinds of stuff. I was trying to read stuff, but you know, this, this is a good 20 years ago. So yeah. 20 years ago, there was no pad- podcasts. There was Google was, I don't even know if there was Google. I, I maybe, uh, I there were know. books, <laughs> there were books, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm that old. Um, <laughs> there were books, there were health food stores, uh, and there were naturopaths. I mean, there were naturopaths and other type of holistic um, healers. And that's where I was sourcing my information from. And, um, you know, I was working throughout that time, you know, in a bank. And I, the one common thing that came across from all the healers was that food has, has, an, has a significance. Mm-hmm. And, you know, different healers had different views on, you know, what type of foods you should be eating, what types of foods you shouldn't be eating. But for me, that was quite eye opening because the whole time that I was sick with my autoimmune diseases, I was literally just seeing doctors, right? I was seeing the conventional doctors and they were saying to me, this has nothing to do with lifestyle. This has nothing to do with food. Wow. We don't know why you're sick. And um, so for me, you know, that was that was eye opening. And then I had this this aha moment when um, I saw a naturopath in Sydney, actually, and she said to me, you should drop gluten from your diet. Now, in Mm. those days, 
today it's very easy to drop gluten because yeah. everything is gluten free. There's a lot of awareness about it. You know, you can find gluten free bread everywhere you go and pasta, and it's so easy. Uh, but back in the day, not so easy. <laughs> that was like bread and pasta was a staple for me. Like literally, mm. I was eating bread all the time, like three times a day. Yeah. Um. So that was a big, big thing for me. But within a week of quitting gluten, I had such a significant symptom reduction that I was like, geez, this, this must be magic. Like I was just thrown away by how I had such great symptom reduction. Now, granted, not everybody has a symptom reduction from dropping gluten or dairy or any kind of nutritional change. I was lucky right. that I had that. Because for, for I me, have a that question was... though, because people kind of like look over these symptoms. Like what were some of the symptoms that you were like suffering yeah. from? So at the time, uh, one of the biggest symptoms was that I uh, I had a lot of mucus production and I had a lot of sinus infections, like very, very, very chronic sinus. Mm. Um, and I couldn't breathe from my nose, which which is a huge problem, by the way. Of course. Um, <laughs> that, and I had a lot of brain fog um, and I had a lot of digestive issues, like real digestive issues. So for me, that was, that was a big deal. That was a very big deal. Because in one week, I felt a massive change. I, I could breathe from my nose. I couldn't believe it. That's kind of wild. Um, it was wild. I, I would I don't think that if I hadn't had such a strong reaction, I would have believed it as much as I did. And then I was right. like, oh, this, this nutrition stuff has something to it. Like there's, there's, there's something to it. But because there was no podcasts and, you know, there was very little information there, I said, I, I should go study this stuff. So I enrolled in nutrition school. I went to study awesome. like a naturopathic school in Sydney and I studied a first degree in the evenings while I was working in the mornings. And that's kind of how I got into the world of, of health and wellness, you know, um, about 20 years ago. So it's been, it's been a, it's been an interesting, you know, ride. I've, I've studied many modules on, you know, I've studied iridology and homeopathy and herbs. I've studied functional medicine for me, it always comes back to that nutrition piece. Although health is is really composed of many different aspects, right? It has the spiritual, mental, emotional part, but it has the physical side as well, like your movement, your stress levels, your hormones. But nutrition is a big piece. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's probably one of the easier pieces to work on. It's so also, people, I mean, foundational. It is. It is. It is. So I think like for a lot of people, that's where they start with their journey. It will be like fitness and nutrition or movement yeah. and nutrition. And and I like to be part of those people's journey because I think that here it can be quite traumatic. Sometimes you'll go see nutritionists or people that work in the functional medicine world or anywhere in the holistic world. And they'll, they'll you can go through some like pretty traumatic experiences where people will be like, oh, you have to quit eating all these foods and, you know, and like really drastic and, and, and food is also very emotional for a lot of people. So for me, yeah, I like to be that intervention there because I feel like I want to make it accessible for people, easy for people. You know, I want to address concerns. I want to address the emotional part. I want to tell them it's not forever. It's just for a little bit until we heal the body. And then we can go back to a much more inclusive diet. And I'm passionate about that. Like, and 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 the more I learn about food and cooking and like traditional diets the more I become more passionate about it because there's just it's such a huge world right and you can yeah. really start your healing journey with with the food part it's not the only part and I always tell people like some the lucky people get better from just the nutrition you really have to work on other aspects as well but I think this is a good place to start I agree with you and food is a necessity of life I mean if you don't have food you die <laughs> it's just what fuels our our bodies and so I'm curious what you're going through everything and working you know with clients and things of that nature patients what is your philosophy today when it comes to food that's a great question I love when people ask me that I am not married to any diet. So okay. I don't swear by a diet. I, I work with guidelines. So there's definitely things that I, you know, that I educate my patients about, like, you know, using quality oils in their diet, you know, um, using fruits and vegetables in your diet, prioritizing protein. But 
I'm not a, I'm not a very, I, I, I meet my patient where they are at. So yeah. if I have a vegan patient that is not open to eating animal protein, there will Fine. be no animal protein. Um, if I have someone that's really doing well on a ketogenic style diet or a carnivore style diet, I'll, I'll roll with them. I really feel that we're so different, right? We're, we're yeah. so biologically different from each other. Um, there's lots of other things other than biology and, and DNA. There's your financial status. Are you working or you're not working? Um, do you have a good kitchen at home or you don't? Do, do you like to cook or or you don't? Um, there's, you know, are you a working mom with, you know, kids and you don't have time for yourself? So there's a lot of factors that will go into me making a menu plan for someone because I, I think it should be really personalized and adapted to where you at you are at now in your journey. You know, for someone, it might be just drinking more water. Uh, and for another person, it might be making healthier choices when they eat out. And for another person, it might be a full on menu plan where they're, you know, changing a lot of things in their diet. But it doesn't have to be drastic. It can be, I believe that small changes make big differences. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I couldn't agree more with you, you know, when, cause you see all these like trends and everything like that, you know, people get, and listen, you, you want, you need to experiment, right? Like it's a trial and error for everyone. I'm the type of person I could never not have animal protein. It's just like, not even I, I couldn't even conceptualize not having that in my diet. But for some other people, they're like, oh, no, I'm not going near it. Whether it be, you know, morals or or they're like, no, like it hurts my stomach, whatever it may be. So, you know, for someone who's looking for just like getting their toes wet into nutrition, do you have any like tips, tools, tricks where someone could just like get started? Like what's the easiest place you think to start with someone is? I think water and vegetables, those are two good places to start with because water is essential, right? We all have to drink and 70% of our body is made of water. Yeah. Um, and the type of water that we drink makes a difference because unfortunately tap water isn't that healthy for us. It's full of chemicals and yeah, yeah, yeah. pesticides, it's, herbicides, it's crazy. residue, medication, all kinds of crap. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 that's where I usually start with people. I'm like, you need to be drinking depending where you live and how, how, you know, how hot it is. Or if you're in the air con, even in cold places, if you're in heating all the time, you get dehydrated. So I work on hydration first. So, mm. um, quality water, meaning good quality water filter, proper water filter, ideally filtering out fluoride as well. Yeah. Um, and then making sure that you're properly hydrated, you're drinking enough throughout the day. And if you sweat a lot or you live in a very hot place, even using good quality electrolytes to make sure that you're hydrated. That's a very good part of it. You'd be surprised the amount of people that are dehydrated. I'd say maybe 90% of the people that come Most to see Most people don't are. Drink. Yeah, <laughs> right. And it's just even that, like improves your metabolism, improves your digestion, improves your energy, improves your immunity. Like everything will get better if you're properly hydrated. What do you so, say to the people that are like, I don't like water. Like I hate water. Like, what do you do? Okay. Well, there's lots of, there's lots of things that you can do. Firstly, electrolytes, which is one of my favorite ways to flavor water. And today I'm literally drinking some... that right now. <laughs> 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 which ones are you drinking? So I started, I just started trying, um, the Flav City, um, mm, was... brand. Yeah. I, I just started I was looking into it because I, I wanted like a clean brand, of course. Yeah. Um, and I like it. It's pretty good. Amazing. So yeah. I, I also trial and error. I make sure that mine are like, no, don't have sugar and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but so electrolytes are great. Um, just even flavoring water, like, you know, a couple of slices of uh, an orange or an apple or a cucumber, some herbs like rosemary or mint makes mm. a big difference to the flavor. And if you're like a person that's used to drinking, for example, juice, you could like water down your juice. You could use, you could use like a quarter of a cup of apple juice and then, you know, the, the three quarters of the rest of the cup water. So you can mm -hmm. even do that to kind of give just a touch of flavor to your water, just to kind of make sure that you're hydrated. Um, if, you know, if you're a sparkling water person, oh, sorry, if you're like a soda type of like sparkling water is a good option, even yeah. kombucha, like, you know, you can water down some kombucha and that can give you some flavor. So 
you know, it's, it's just a matter of getting used to it, you know, and, and that's an easy, in. those are easy tricks. Like that's so yeah. easy to do. It is. It's just, it's also a matter of getting used to it. A lot of people are not used to, to drinking. Some people are concerned about the fact that they need to go to the toilet a lot, you know, after they drink a lot and it, it is annoying, but you know, it's okay. I mean, it means your body's yeah. working. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> Luckily for most of us, toilets are around 24 seven, wherever we go. So yeah. it's fine. Um, so I would say hydration is a very big piece yeah. because that's going to make you feel better instantly, you know, and, and just even working on that, you have to like put little reminders in your phone or take a water bottle with you everywhere you go, or, um, you know, um, you know, put little post-its on your computer or your desk or something to remind you to drink. That's, that's a good place to start. And that's pretty easy. Yeah. Love that. The second one, which I think again is you know, relatively easy is eating more vegetables. Okay. So vegetables are a great source of fiber, which is, I kind of like to tell people fiber is like a, it's like a broom. It cleans your arteries. Mm -hmm. it, it like it, it cleans your gut. It cleans your arteries. It's really important for your microbiome. So your gut health and your immunity. And that's, it's, it's the food of the good bacteria fiber. So you definitely want to have fiber. Uh, we know from numerous studies that um, eating a diet that's rich in vegetables can protect you from various cancers, can increase your immunity, can you know protect you from metabolic disease. So there's lots of, lots of you know research telling us vegetables are great, and most people know that, right? People know vegetables are good for you. Um, and vegetables also have vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. So they're they're just an all rounder. Where does the problem come in? Um, one is convenience. It's just uh, washing the fruits and vegetables and, you know, making a salad. It's, it takes time. It's much easier to put two pieces of bread and a piece of uh, yellow cheese or, or ham or something like that and have lunch, you know what I mean, rather than standing and cutting a salad. Um, so convenience and time is one. And the second one is price. You know, for a lot of people, depending where you live in the world, vegetables are not so cheap you know, right. and, and, and people are like, well, it's quite expensive, you know, but I don't know if it's worthwhile. Um, so I would say that should be a priority that you should say to yourself, I am going to at least two meals a day to de devote half of my meal to vegetables. Mm. So say lunch and dinner, you're devoting half of your meal to vegetables and you're having a variety of vegetables. Studies show us that you need about 30, three, zero different vegetables a week to actually harvest a healthy microbiome. So just, you know, working your way up with that, like, you know, saying, okay, I eat cucumbers, I eat tomatoes, I eat lettuce, but maybe I could introduce broccoli this week or cauliflower yeah. or beetroot or whatever, right? And just playing with it. And then I think things like, you know, making a big batch of soup, lots of veggies inside and eat frozen veggies by the way are great so if you go to your your supermarket and you buy frozen veggies you use them in a soup that's easy and it's convenient and it's healthy as well yeah I always tell people that I'm like frozen vegetables count like just I look know. at the back of the label and see what the ingredients are of course Correct. but frozen vegetables like they're really just cutting it up and then they're freezing it so I mean exactly it, if anything, they're holding a lot more nutrients, like a lot and, of the time. And also they're they're cost effective because they don't right. get bad, right? So you can just always have a bag of frozen spinach. You can always have a bag of like frozen like broccoli and cauliflower and carrots. You can have peas. Um, you, there's cauliflower rice today that you can get. That's perfect. Yeah. I just had for dinner cauliflower pizza bases that I had in my freezer and we just oh, made cauliflower so good. pizzas. And it's cute. I mean, it's cool. It's it's not it's not it's not hard to right. to have that. So a big soup is good. If you're a person that's, I mean, I'm always fresh is best. But if you are pressed on time and you don't have time today, you can get a lot of like pre cut salad mixes. Mm. It's not ideal, but it's better than not eating vegetables. So yeah. even that, for example. And then just, you know, snacking on vegetables is a good one as well. Like a lot of the time, you know, we, we feel like we need a snack because we're bored or we're stressed. Cutting up, you know, cucumber, carrot, you know, my, I do that a lot for the kids. The kids are big snackers and they're always like watching a movie and they're like, oh, bring me something to snack or I'll see them run to the snack drawer. And I'm like, do you want me to cut you up some some veggies and some fruits? And they're like, yeah, I make them a big plate and, and they eat it. Yeah. Because, you know, you just mindlessly eat when you're in front of the TV. 
Um, yeah. So when you increase your vegetables, you're already starting to improve a lot of markers in your health. And I would say those are the best ways to start kind of working on your health. I love that. They're so it's so easy to do those things. That is so practical. And again, it's like, oh, okay. Like if I'm not able to get fresh, fresh vegetables, I'll get frozen. That's fine. I'll do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so for the people who, because I get this question a lot. So obviously, you know, you're a functional integrative nutritionist. What yeah. is the difference between you and someone who is a nutritionist like what is the difference there because obviously there is a difference and yeah. you know I, I do get that question a lot so I want the listeners to understand you know this side of holistic health is much different than someone who is just practicing you know nutrition and a nutritionist because I've heard some horror stories of yeah. you know them's like someone who is dealing with um one person in particular I'm thinking of they were dealing with uh cardiovascular issues and you know their nutritionist was like oh yeah like have margarine and and I'm like what absolutely not do not do that yeah yeah you hit the nail on the head there um it's so confusing right there's so many so different confusing titles. there's <laughs> dietitians there's nutritionists there's health coaches there's this whole integrative there's holistic there is functional medicine. What is it? So functional medicine is a title that usually refers to people that have completed, um, you know, a degree of some sort in the world of functional medicine. The way I explain functional medicine is functional medicine is the marriage between um, conventional medicine and holistic mm. medicine. So most mm. of the people that have studied functional medicine actually come from the world of conventional medicine like doctors and nurses. Um, but but you can get people like me who came from the holistic world and studied more into the, the medical world. And what functional medicine says, functional medicine says there's root causes for your disease. Right. So whatever you have, whether it's cardiovascular disease or Alzheimer or cancer, or you can get pregnant or you've got skin issues, whatever it is, there's a root cause for that, or there's root causes. And so we said some of the root causes can be physical, stuff like your food, you might be eating a diet that's not good, or you might be eating foods that are creating inflammation in your body. Um, you might have nutritional deficiencies, like you might have low iron levels or low vitamin D levels. Um, you might have been exposed to chemicals, um, like mm. mold, for example, or you've got amalgams in your teeth, or you've got asbestos in your house, or you know, you've been exposed to some sort of chemical that you're not even aware of. Um, you might have gotten um, hormonal imbalances, you know, your thyroid might not be working well, your blood sugar balance might not be working well, maybe your sex hormones are off. Um, so you might be exercising too much, too little. There's a lot of physical things that that could create disease, and usually it's a few things together. It's not usually one on its own, right? Um, and then there's the other side of the scale, the root causes, which is trauma, mm. stress, and um, and you know emotional, spiritual well being, you know, and that that makes a big difference in a person's life. And you really can't achieve health until you don't fix those root causes. Mm. You know, so for for example, I'll give my my own self as an example. I, at the age of uh, eighteen, um, got the Epstein Barr virus. It's a very very common virus to get when you're eighteen. It's, I had that too. Yeah, so it's otherwise known as the kissing sickness because you yeah. get it through saliva, and um, I had it pretty bad. I had it pretty bad, and Epstein Barr virus is quite well known to sit in the thyroid gland. It kind of yes. burrows, burrows itself there. But other viruses that people, for example, kind of are root causes is Lyme, for example, which is huge in the US. Yeah, um, I'm seeing it and, everywhere. Yeah, and Lyme is actually prominent all over the world, not only the US. Yeah, It's not only from ticks. You can get Lyme from spiders. You can get Lyme from mosquitoes and wasps. There's a lot of other ways oh, you can get Lyme. Oh, I didn't even know yeah. that. Yep. So, I mean, so just that's an example, like a virus. Right. So right. for me... That was the starting point of my um, of my disease, but I also had a terrible diet. I drank a lot of alcohol. I smoked. Mm -hmm. I 
was a typical 18 year old and, you know, really didn't eat a good diet. So those were all contributing factors that drove my gut to be very um, weak, my immune system to be very weak, and ultimately for my body to start developing um, antibodies towards my thyroid. And that was like the first autoimmune disease. And I didn't know that smoking is going to, you know, the smoke kind of re resides in your in your um, thyroid gland and that your body develops autoantibodies to that. Nobody told me that. Yeah. I thought it was cool to smoke. You know, I was yeah. 18. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I wasn't even thinking about it. Who who doesn't drink alcohol at 18? Everybody drinks alcohol. Like it's it's normal. Right. Um and so, it's so and it's so heavily advertised too. So like yeah. yeah, it's it's out there and you're just like, Oh yeah, not a problem. Like, fine, okay. I'm just having a good time. I, I wasn't aware of all these things and right. I I don't know why. And, you know, maybe, you know, I think at the time my parents were getting divorced as well. So it probably okay. was that emotional stress. There was a cascade of events. Multiple things. Exactly. That brought my body to develop that first autoimmune disease. And that's what functional medicine is about. When I see people, I see people that are sick. They've been sick for a while. They've seen multiple doctors and they're coming to me and they're like, you know, I want to get better. And they think that they're just going to, you know, take some supplements, change their diet. And I'm like, it's not enough. Right. There other things there. We need to, we need to uncover it. And we're, we're like a detective. Yeah. We're looking for these things. It's like peeling layer after layer after layer off. And that can take maybe sometimes even a couple of years. You know, I it tell people it like 13 years to heal. Yeah. And I'm still working on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel that. Um, <sighs> so, yeah. So what's the difference between a nutritionist to functional medicine? So that's the main thing. I'm looking for the root cause. Um, in terms of diet recommendations, there's quite a big difference between holistic nutritionists and holistic coaches and the functional medicine world, as opposed to the dietetics and nutrition association. Okay. Um, the dietetics, dietetics and nutrition association is very old school way of teaching nutrition. They're teaching calories and they're teaching macronutrients, which is just like a small like, piece to the puzzle. Correct. They're speaking about carbohydrates, proteins, uh, fats, and they're speaking about caloric intake. And, you know, if you've got diabetes, you need to reduce your sugar and increase your fiber and stuff like that. But you're not looking into the quality of food. So I also speak about macronutrients. But for me, the quality of the food is actually important. Oh, the way yes. you prepare your food um, is very important as well. The types of oils that you use. So we come from very, very, very different backgrounds. It's literally like two different religions. It's, yeah. it's like you can't compare it. It's, it's, yeah. it's totally different. Right. It's black and white. Yeah. Um, for me, the thing that stands out, and again, I'm not, I'm not, a, I mean, I've, I have great colleagues as well that have studied with me in the functional medicine world that came from nutrition or dietetics. Some of my mentors were dietitians. There are a lot of dietitians and nutritionists that have made that transition, have come along with the times, have studied along with doctors, by the way, there's a lot of MDs that have now started to study functional medicine. The younger generation are starting yeah. to get a little bit more into it. The older generation still a bit resistant. But for me, the thing that kind of stands out is that the big sponsors of uh, the Dietetic Association, the Nutrition Dietetic, are, are big corporations like Kraft, like Coca-Cola. Um, That's like, well, crazy. Exactly. And if you went to a convention, wow. you would be shocked because you'd be like, wow, Coke is sponsored. I mean, I've been to conventions that I've been invited to and there'll be like, I don't know, like yeah, Coca-Cola or, or, or like some real unhealthy food, like sponsoring the event. And you're like, yeah, really? This is not, this is not that doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and very often, you know, I, I, it's an interesting thing. You know, sometimes I work with my, my cancer patients, for example, and I'm, I'm appalled to see what the nutrition uh, or the dietitian in the hospital is, is making them oh. drink or eat. It's enough to go to the hospital, go to the hospital, see the food that they're feeding people. They're feeding people sugar, simple carbohydrates, food that has zero nutrients in it. And it's enough for you to understand that they don't really know anything about nutrition if they're feeding people that. Nothing. People that are sick. Nothing. And exactly. Me being a two-time cancer survivor, nothing irritates me more than seeing that. And then, you know, working with others who are going through the battle and they're telling me that they're working with, and again, this 
And I understand why, because insurance covers it, right? So that's where that comes in. We'll, we'll touch on that. Um, and they're working with these dietitians and nutritionists who work specifically with the hospitals and the garbage that they are telling them that they could eat is mind blowing. I'm like, this is going to make you sick. You cannot mind heal blowing. in the same environment that you got sick in originally. A hundred percent. It and, blows my mind. It blows my mind. And the doctors are, are you know, they're, they're vouching it. They're saying, yeah. yeah. You yeah you you can you can eat whatever you want you can eat and the worst part is and this is this is something I've come across especially with oncologists mm-hmm. is they're not up to date on the latest research not you at know, all I'll, I'll be coming in and saying you know I mean this is this is this is, we're really going to like nuances and stuff yeah but I'll be speaking about you know intermittent fasting when you're doing uh, treatment you know yep. and there's a lot of research on that and yep. you know it's not for everyone and not everybody can do it but right. Some of my patients are good candidates and I want them to be fasting when they're doing their treatments to improve outcome. Right. Doctors are like, we don't know of anything. And I send them the research and they're like, oh, oh, you know, and, and that frustrates me. Like, you know, I, I work really hard as I'm sure you do as well to be very up to date on everything that's coming out in this world, because there's a lot of research. There's a lot of new stuff. coming. There's out a and you lot. Need to be there. Yeah. And you need to be on top of it. Otherwise you're, you know, last year was last year. Yeah. Every out about all of the different modalities and, and healing tools that you can utilize. And like you said about intermittent fasting, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but, and I'm sure you're going to talk about this as well. Like intermittent fasting, like you said, is not for everyone, but the research is very strong And again, you have to be working with someone who understands that you have to be a specific candidate for intermittent fasting. Correct. It's, 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 it is frustrating when, when you talk to, you know, when I speak to other, you know, dietitians and nutritionists, I'm like, wait, I'm sure you, you can cross, you you probably come across this a lot. I get a lot of my patients, my cancer patients, but not only my cancer patients, like some Crohn's patients and stuff like that, that have lost a lot of weight and then their dietitians will put them on and sure. Oh, you get that. Oh. And then I'm like, oh my God, did you read the ingredient list of that stuff? Disgusting disgusting i hear it all the time they're like here just drink this um what i did you read I, the you ingredients know, it's it's poison it literally poison. is poison it's literally, literally making you more sick totally and the, the the funny thing is that you could easily make a smoothie because of course you're after treatment it's hard for you to drink you know that's you understandable but still you could make a smoothie that has good quality protein has some healthy fats in there some antioxidants and you could you could wing it yeah you know, and it would be so be- so much better for you <laughs> uh, that's the insurer thing kills me it comes up so much though it's it's hard because you know what i i realize like what the issue is it's belief system changing someone's belief system is one of the hardest things to do because then that shows them that they were wrong and that you know that's fine like not that you were just you were just put in the wrong like you are impressionable, right? And and you develop that off of false falsity. And and then the other thing is insurance. So, yeah. you know, are you someone that takes insurance? Like, how does that work? I work with people from all over the world. So sometimes right. they have good quality insurance and they can, you know, they can, they can do it. They can get their insurance to cover, but sometimes they don't have, they can't. And that's a, yeah. the problem with most of the people that are working in the holistic slash functional medicine world is that, a lot of the time insurance doesn't cover yeah. um, and it's out of pocket. Yeah. But that's why I think like making, that's why I do a lot of like online stuff and I do like, you know, Zooms and um, workshops and master classes so that it can, you know, even eBooks so that it can fit everyone's budget. If you, if right. you can't see me privately, there's lots of master classes and stuff that you can do. And I think I'm passionate to do it at that price because I feel like I want to spread this knowledge. I, I, yeah. People need this knowledge. You know, I, I'm, if I meet one of my patients five years down the line and they said, you know, you really helped me, even though I, they didn't see me, they get, I'm so happy. That's worth everything. Right. Best feeling. The best feeling. 
Exactly. And so, you know, I think none of us get into this world to become multimillionaires because you can't become a multimillionaire from this. You have to work hard and you're not going to become rich from this, but your, your work really pays off. But you know, it's interesting what you say about like the belief system. People are very vulnerable, by the way, when they have cancer and when they've got oh, yeah. illnesses and they listen to their doctor. Doctor is God at that point. A hundred percent. Doctor is God at that point. And yeah. It's frustrating because now you're putting all of your energy, all of your belief into this, like an external source. Like it's not coming yeah. from within. And that no. plays a role in disease as well. A hundred percent. And and a lot of the time people have intuitions that they don't follow. Yeah. But I will tell you something. I've noticed this lately. Mm. There is a whole new generation of young people that are not listening to the doctors. They I agree. are inquiring. They're on podcasts, they're listening, they're reading stuff, they're going to online stuff, they're and they're coming to me and I'm like, how did you hear about me? And they're like, online. You know, we listened to podcasts, they said functional medicine, we Googled. Um, and I'm like, wow, you know, and they're like, yeah, we don't trust the doctor. We've had, you know, I had this guy, I spoke to him today, he was such a cute guy. I don't know, he was like 19. He had like terrible acne. Okay. He sold the, all the doctors. They, you know, they put him on Accutane. They <gasps> gave him all the oh, stuff. No. And he was like, it was not getting better. So I started to Google and I did the paleo diet. I can't remember which diet he did and, and things start to get better. And, but, but I want to take it forward. And I was like, so I'm like, you're not seeing a doctor. He's like, no, I'm the doctor now because I don't <gasps> trust the doctors anymore because they told me that food has nothing to do with my acne. But when I changed my diet, I had a huge, you know, positive reaction. And so I'm seeing this, I'm seeing these people. I'm also seeing the women, the women that have had enough of, you know, of going to the doctor, you know, these perimenopausal, menopausal women, mm -hmm. 45 and up, they're going to the doctor. The doctor's like, here's some antidepressants. Here's some sleeping medication. Yeah. Let's put an IUD in you because, you know, oh, you're just, your PMS is all over the place. Um, and they're saying, well, no, actually something's wrong. Something, something's not adding up here. And they're, they're starting to reach out and they're looking and they're saying, well, I don't feel great, you know, and I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's not depression. It's something else. And then they're like, oh, hormones. We, no one told us, no one told us that we're going through perimenopause and, you know, we can optimize. Yeah. You know, it's been a very big taboo so, so topic. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, I 100, I, I agree with you totally because I'm, I'm seeing this as well. Like, and also just from my own experience, being my own doctor, literally and having to do the research on my own, I know that it is aggravating and irritating and frustrating when you lose your health. But that's why you need to be preventative. Like you need to be preventative with creating your health team of people who are going to have your back, who are up to date on research and who are going to do what's best for you and your body and figure out like the root causes because like you said before you know if you're not hitting that root cause it's just going to keep coming back and it, it's going to spiral out of control a hundred percent a hundred percent and I think we're all on this journey on earth of you know becoming better versions of ourselves and getting yeah. to know ourselves better and you know uncovering yeah. um and and <laughs> disease leads you to do that like it forces yeah. you it's the medicine very, <laughs> it forces you to, to to learn about yourself it forces you to be your own advocate it, you know and if you don't you succumb to the disease yeah yeah I and there's people that, that don't that don't you know I I work with a lot of different people um and that's okay you know maybe that's it's not your cycle you know? yeah maybe it's in the next cycle who knows yeah um you know but I think that going forward for me my dream is that the medical world will start to really, you know, open up and become more inclusive towards holistic practitioners and include them. And, you know, every uh, clinic, whether whether it's an oncology clinic or a gynecology clinic, whatever, uh, are going to have, you know, proper nutritionists in there, psychologists, TCMs, Ayurvedic professionals, massage therapists, coaches. People need this. This is the model of health, as you say, and we're going to save millions because less people will be sick um people are going to have less medications which is not you know not financial for the pharma companies but that's obviously um, why they don't want to do that but <laughs> correct I'm, I'm naive and you know i have this like you know wish in my heart that that's what's going to happen but 
it will happen. I think, I think I believe people are so. starting to wake up, you know, about things. Yeah, because if you don't have people investing and going to doctors, then, I mean, you're still not making that money. So I also believe that, you know, will it take time? Probably. But yeah. I do see a shift in the paradigm of people losing their trust in doctors. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, and listen, not all doctors are bad, right? Like I've had good doctors. Yeah. I've had really shitty doctors but I listened to my intuition and I said no this is not going to work for me and they didn't have any other recommendation so I did not continue seeing them and I just went on to the next and I decided to do my research and find other people like yourself who have my back and my best interest yeah exactly but you have a strong core and you didn't fall victim to scare tactics. Yep. The fear which mongering. Is what very, very, very often the medical world does. They scare the shit out of you. And then you're petrified. You're like, oh, if I don't take this medicine, I'm going to die. That's it. Yep. You yep. know, it doesn't matter what medicine it is. And again, this needs to change because yep. there are other alternatives. And we need to speak about these alternatives. Um, you know, it can be, I'm not even speaking about the cancer world. It can be about, about you know, just even pain relief medication you don't need a pop a paracetamol or an advil every single time you have a headache or a pain there's lots of other options so many yeah, but we just need to educate people it's it's about education and that's why people like me and you're out there doing our jobs educating people and i think i sleep very soundly at night because i know yeah. that every every single day i go into the field i i make a change in someone's life i spread knowledge and um, I have the best job in the world. Literally, I, I've been working, you know, in this field now for 17 years. Um, I don't get sick of my job. Like, you know, Sunday night rolls in. I'm like, yeah, popped. Let's, let's yes, go. love and, that. And I think that, you know, that's, that's you know, what, what makes, I think, our job, you know, good. Because you know that you're doing something good. You believe in what you're doing. No one's paying me to sell a medication no one's forcing me to to I don't I don't promote any brands or products. No one pays me for anything. And I feel that I when I give my advice, I'm giving a hundred percent advice that's properly researched. I've tried it on myself. Um, and you know, I, no one's no one's tried to, you know, it influence me in any way to yeah. think or say something. Love that. That's so great. Oh, so much like to take from this conversation. So as we wrap up, are there any words of wisdom you would like to leave the listeners? Wow. I would say don't be scared. (laughs) Don't be scared. Listen to yourself. Listen to your gut. You are your body's best doctor. You really are. You know what you need. Um, I really, truly believe it. And I speak to so many people. They know what they need. They're just scared. So don't be scared. Don't be scared. And don't lose hope because the body can heal from extreme situations. You've been through cancer twice. Mm-hmm. You know that mm-hmm. um, the body can heal. The body can heal and it's doable. You just need to believe in it and don't let anybody take away that belief from you. Mm. Love that. I have full body chills. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah, you no, so I, much. I, I really believe it. I believe that. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom. Thank you for Uh, having me. Yeah. So where can people find you? So I'm online. Thanks to COVID. Um, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You love Zoom. Uh, Same. I feel you on that. My my clinic. Like it's, it's. It's so exciting, though, that I work with people from all over the world. Um, So you can meet me online. I have a a website which you can link to, which is called Nutritious and Delicious, um, which hosts all my master classes and my workshops and my ebooks. So really, you can work with me in many dimensions. I'm on Instagram under Corinne Gojiberry. And you, you know, I try and post relevant information, recipes and stuff like that so people can get inspired and I have a retreat coming up in Greece. Ooh. If you feel like really going to those root causes, working on your spirit, you know, addressing trauma, releasing trauma, but also being in a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setting in Greece, in the mountains, 
um, in an amazing retreat called Euphoria, which, by the way, was founded by a woman who had cancer. She was a very, very um, top-notch banker in um, in Greece. She was one of the most well-known women in Greece. She got cancer. She quit her job. She went roaming around the world. She visited all the health retreats in the world. She went like around Asia and America, everywhere. And she formed Euphoria Retreat, which works on the five elements of health in the mountains in Greece in a UNESCO World Heart Heritage uh, place. And, in, and I'm running a retreat there with a very close friend and colleague of mine. Uh, and we're combining yoga, breath work, um, you know, some inner journeying, um, nutrition, of course, um, spa, hiking, you know, all the good stuff. That sounds phenomenal. <laughs> it is. It is. This is our second time when we're running it. Oh, and awesome. last year was incredible. So if you want to, if you feel like something very special, that's where you can definitely hang with me. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'll link all of these in the show notes. So you guys know where to find her. And thank you so much for coming on. It was such a great conversation. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys. If you like this episode, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.